lovers, it's Malia. So today we're going to talk about the amazing book, Deep Blue. And how I heard about this book is Emma Books, and you can find her link right here. She had a TBR that I watched, and Disney Hyperion gave her the entire series. And I'm a mermaid person. I love mermaids, I love water, I love the ocean, everything about it. So, and I read a couple mermaid books previously that just didn't didn't satisfy my craving for a mermaid book. And this is so good because it was so detailed. It's so detailed, it has a glossary in the back, which unfortunately I did not find until the end of the book, but I'm glad I know now so that I can refer back to it, which is exciting. Um, so that's the first thing I liked about it is that there was a glossary. Because there were so many words that are unknown or new that she created, she had to have an entire glossary filled so that we could kind of read along and know exactly what these things mean. Let's get started and talk about the book. So the prologue talks about this this area and it was really dark and then all of a sudden water fire erupted out of nowhere and there are these sea witches called the Ely. Ely, that's how I'm gonna say it. If you guys know how to pronounce it, please let me know in the comments below. Anyway, they're, they're basically sea witches. And so how sea witches have their power, how everybody under the sea has magic is through song spells or through their voice. And by enchanting a certain type of song, that's how they their powers are created. And I thought that was really interesting that it's through song and music. So there's, so the water fire erupts and the, one of the sea witches saw that there was the monster that for centuries it was forgotten and now it all of a sudden awoke. And so they, these witches are trying to keep it down. They don't even know how it passed through the, through a, like a vortex. And so they're just trying to keep it down and they realize that their power isn't strong enough. So the head witch sings a song spell, daughter of Marrow, find the five. One whose heart will hold the light, one possessed with prophet sight, one who does not yet believe, one with spirit sure and strong, and one who sings all creatures songs. At first, I kind of glanced over this. I just read it. I didn't really see the meaning in behind it until later in the book. Then I was referring back to it because I was like, oh my goodness, this is the most important thing. And that's in the prologue. And basically the monster is just trying to get out and the witches are just not strong enough, but they finally have enough strength just to hold it. And they're like, we need a solution. We need a new plan because we're not powerful to, to control whatever's trying to escape. That prologue was Serafina's dream. And Serafina is the main character. She's the princess and she's the daughter of Meryl. Yeah, Princess Hessa instead of princess, which is really cute. So she awakes from her dream and she wakes from her mom. And her mom is she's the queen so she's very controlling she's very everything needs to be perfect she has so much on her shoulders she has so much pressure and she wants the best out of her daughter she wants perfection she's not a normal mom obviously so she doesn't care about her hair she doesn't care about that she's going to be marry a prince she doesn't care about any of that all she cares is that her song spell is perfect that she, all she cares about is making sure that everything goes well smoothly and her song is okay. And so Serafina's trying to tell her mom, mom, I have this crazy dream. And her mom's just dismissing it. Like, no, the dream is just a dark nightmare. You have nothing to worry about. The Ely was just something I told you when you were a kid to scare you to go into sleep because it's not, but it's not real. It's just some fairy tale. But Serafina just can't get it out of her mind. And, and that's when the first chapter ends. I just loved how at the end of the chapter, there were just so many unanswered questions and that's what really kept my, it piqued my interest. It, had, it was mysterious, it was creepy at times, it had action, it had romance, and all under the sea. And that's why I give it a five out of five stars. So I'm really excited to tell you guys about the rest of the Fi Water Fire series and let me know in the comments below if you guys have read this or if you guys have any other mermaid books that you've read that I should start reading. Let me know in the comments below and if you have any books that you're reading right now that I just have to read, please let me know. If you have any advice or some suggestions to make my channel better, also let me know. I would love to hear what you guys have to say. Thank you guys so much for your time and enjoy every moment.